Um, and today we are joined by um, Dara Fitz. And I actually don't know the rest of your surname. I don't uh, have the rest of just Dara. Uh, just Dara Fitz. Yeah, and, uh, and Owen Murphy, or as he was probably more commonly referred to as the Irish Fridge or Gurfling. Um, lads, how are you getting on? Good. Not too bad now, yeah. So, lads, um, there will probably be a share of listeners that won't know who you are, so uh, maybe just fill us in on your background, what uh, what it is you do, and um, maybe even some of your best lifts or something like that. Uh, so, I'm Dara Fitz. Uh, I have a gym here in Bandon, Bandon, Shed the Conditioning, um, and I have Seekish out with Gurf. We do online weightlifting programs, powerlifting programs, and stuff like that. Uh, I do a bit of weightlifting. Uh, best snatches is 125, best clean jerk 150. Um, so Don't tell them your numbers. <laughs> <laughs> My numbers are greater than theirs. <laughs> uh, so I graduated from UL with a degree in biochemistry and I work in a pharmaceutical company at the moment and as they are selling the co-owner of Seek of Strength with him. Uh, so my best lifts are 150 snatch, um, 185 kilo clean and jerk, uh, the uh, jerk, uh, two ninety back squat, two forty front squat, and a hundred twenty kilo bench. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the question on everyone's minds: When are you going to do three hundred? Um. So probably next Christmas. Maybe I'll make an actual. I haven't really put any effort in the squatting the last eighteen months. I think I added like twenty kilos to my squat last year, so I kind of got burned out from it. So I just did a lot of stupid things. I literally haven't followed the squat program since last May. Define, define stupid things, because that, that can be oh, a vast array of things. 200 for 19. I thought it was did 20, but there I decided it didn't count. And You yeah. never asked me to count, like. Well, you think you'd imagine you would, like. But, um, yeah. Uh, 220 for, like, 12 or something. Uh, and literally just, like, make it up every session, like. Oh, right, okay. Like, so just haven't... go in and just do something hard. Yeah, like, right. literally maintaining whatever, like. Okay. Yeah. The rule of like not failing a squat is probably the best thing you have in your program. Like, yeah, I probably haven't failed, probably failed two squats in the last year. Well, and that's it. That's impressive. Yeah, I just don't make sure I don't fail anything. Like, okay. Um, did you find mine a few weeks ago? So that wasn't too bad. You've a pretty big front squat as well, don't you? Yeah, two forty. Um, don't put much effort into front squats. Point. Like I put very little effort into them over the last few months. But okay. Like, just uh. And very short legs, so it makes it very easy. And uh, before I forget to mention, this podcast is sponsored by Beard Combs and Heineken alcohol free beer. Let's just make sure we, we get a mention to those guys. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just going to, um, Dara, I want you to maybe tell the listeners about band and strength and conditioning. When did it start? Why did it start? Who started it? And exactly what is it you offer here? Um, who, yeah. who should train in band and strength and conditioning, I guess? So what we are is we're just a, we're a strength and conditioning gym. Um, kind of a similar setup to what a lot of CrossFit gyms would be. Um, we're just a lot more structured with our programming. So we're, it's probably two years ago now, up until last month, that myself and Teddy Nine, um, we got a lease on this unit. So the unit was completely dilapidated, like you've seen it. Uh, it was an mm. old petrol station. So it took like 11 weeks of physical work, um, poured a new floor, did basically all the work ourselves and had friends help us out. Uh, and then we opened the 22nd of August, 2016. So we're nearly two years open. We've, we've had the unit for two years. Uh, and then what we do is like, it's all class-based training. The vast majority of people are, they pay like monthly memberships. And they usually train like three days a week. Um, and it's just strength and conditioning, so to do some strength work at the start class, some sort of metabolic conditioning. Um, we just keep changing it up so it's you're always guided. Try not to make it boring. Just have people enjoying themselves, making a bit of progress. Very good. And do you have many people here that are competing um, in like weightlifting, powerlifting, CrossFit, anything like that? Uh, we have. There's probably so of like the ninety or so people that are here. We have probably. 10 people doing competitive CrossFit or like not competitive but intermediate or trying to get better at CrossFit mm. um, or doing those kind of comps so I think we have three teams going to the Filthy 150 now and then we just have kind of a group probably a group of 
five or six lifters who are just competing nationally. We've like one really talented youth lifter, um, and she'll go places. Um, it looks like that at the moment, anyway. No, we never went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has the combination of good genetics and good like coaching from the start. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so no, like there's people see what competitive athletes kind of train like when they're here, okay. which I think people like, uh, especially coming in the door, they like seeing people who are here every day for hours working hard. Like. That encourages them to train hard. Yeah, well. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get Just that. like it's kind of a bit of reality check as well. Like, Joe, when they're complaining about doing sit ups at the end of sessions or doing some accessory work, and they see like a 16 year old girl squatting 120, so it, it puts things in perspective. <laughs> it checks egos very, very fast. Yeah, double body weight I, squat. I don't, yeah. I don't think I was squatting 120 at 16. I was squatting maybe 80 kilos or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's maybe a freak. Yeah. yeah, she is a freak. Like that. um, That's mad. Yeah. Probably doing 40, like 40 in the summer. like yeah easily like as well like, think, like she's aiming for 140 in december i think is the aim and like at what uh, kind of weight are we talking body 75 weight? kilo class 75 okay she wouldn't be 75 no she'd be 70 like 72. oh right okay so she's she's approaching a double body weight squat like oh, oh god yeah yeah, yeah. So yeah like yeah. she'll get it definitely within by 2019 she'll have one i'd say she's probably front's got one like 115 or 120 yeah like, before the end of the year i'd say would she yeah like the current goals are for midway through the summer uh, 75 kilo snatch and 100 kilo clean and jerk. Wow. Yeah. That's very impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still only 18, like. 17. 17? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, like, it's good to have people like that in the gym who are pushing yeah. hard. Uh, we've, like, Rory is training his ass off at the moment as well. I think it's important to have, like, that kind of, like, the backbone of us, myself and Teddy, like, we were just athletes before we started coaching. Mm-hmm. And then we we're coaches before we started being gym owners. So like, that's always the kind of basis we like to build on, like of right, having right, right. like athlete focused, yeah, rather than business focused. Like, because you do kind of tend to sort of see a share of that where like a guy they do it in sort of the reverse order of what you're saying. They start training, open up a gym, then learn how yeah, to coach. Yeah, like yeah. you see a bit of that at times, and that's yeah. probably not the best way of going about it. Yeah, like I kind of stumbled into it. Um, I'd been doing kind of like weightlifting, like power lift, uh, power cleans and stuff since I was like 15 for rugby. And then when I stopped playing rugby, I had to give it up. So I just went to a CrossFit gym to start training and then was just hanging around and started coaching and then just got my certs and stuff. Okay. So I, that was the route I took. Teddy was pretty much the same. Any uh, particular reason for you packing in rugby? Was it injuries or just... Got like <coughs> double figures of con- like more than 10 concussions in 14 or 15 months. Solid. So <laughs> would he still go back if like his friends and family wouldn't like? I'd go back right now if I didn't have to live in my parents' house. <laughs> that's that's commitment. Yeah, yeah, like when you can't remember what color your car is when you're walking out of, of your own house, like or where your car is, like. or where your car is, or if you're driving to work and forget where you're driving to and just turn around and go home. That happens a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. So I dropped out of engineering. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you you pursued sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I so so left the real degree. Sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest brain injury of all. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 So were you at the the height of your your muddled sort of uh, um, brain power when you decided to pursue sports oh, science? Said, or? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, <coughs> I'm going to do so. Dra- <laughs> That's literally it. I dropped out of college, worked in uh, in a cider factory in Stonewell Cider in Cork. Um, and the lads there were really good to me. Like, And then I just tried to figure out what I wanted to do with my life in okay. sports science. Like, ar- That's around the same time when I started coaching. Um, and sports science just seemed like a good avenue at the time. A steady routine and job is probably the best thing for your brain as well. Though. Yeah. That's like you really need that when you're go like when your head's that fucked, hmm. you really, really need to just have like wake up at eight o'clock in the morning, go to a job where you're like standing on a conveyor belt, picking out apples. Right, right, right. Then yeah. go train every evening at the same time, then go home. Okay. Do you always know routine. You, you need a, a routine that's completely habitual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Just to try and unfuck yourself really. And do you have problems with it? right now or is it kind of no i'd say of? like 
end of second year, start of third year, those problems started going away. Okay. Um, but I'd, I'd have savage issues of memory, like. Really? Yeah, wow. yeah. Even now, like, I'd, I'd have, I'd have to write everything down, like. Okay. Um. But I'd say even since when I first met you, like, four years ago, maybe? Yeah. Way better, like. Definitely gotten better since then, like. Yeah. That's, like, when I started in UL, it was still bad, like. But you did, like, eliminate the source of the concussions, like, so. Yeah. That probably helped <laughs> an awful lot, like. Like, if you think about it then, so even if we hadn't gotten a bad hit at the weekend and gotten a concussion or, or just some sort of it, like, every single training session, hitting pads and stuff like that, like, if there is that amount of damage or if there's, like, swelling or any of that, you just exacerbate it every single time. Yeah. So then you're talking about four times a week going out, fucking yourself again. And it's it never like, really goes away, like. It's like picking a scab almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Except the scab is what controls your body, like. Well, yeah, <laughs> of course, it's a, it's a much bigger scab. Yeah. <laughs> um, Every concussion is, like, exponential after recovery time, I think. So yeah, like, my last my last hit was, like, 15 minutes into a game, and I was literally just over the top of a rock. And like trying to rob a ball, and it was just a completely normal clean out. Like, just guy hit me, like, pushed me out of the way, and I was gone. fucked, gone. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, the first one after is like six months, and then the next concussion can go like to a year for full recovery. Like, so you mightn't even be like fully recovered yet. Like, yeah, in terms of you could be completely asymptomatic, but just yeah, yeah, you're still yeah. susceptible. Yeah, yeah. I think I did some things when I stopped, when I stopped, like, went really, really clean with food. And when I stopped playing first, and I think that definitely helped. Like, um, like alpha brain as well, did you? Yeah, yeah. I took a lot of alpha brain, um, and just taking anything I could really try and help, creatine and stuff like that. Like, there's some mm. studies on it. Um, I don't know how much, any of that actually helped. I think just not getting hit in the head anymore. Is yeah, probably the best thing. Away the yeah, main, the main culprit is probably. Even now, though, well, I bang my head off something. <laughs> Four or five months ago, and I was fucked from it. Like I've no. <laughs> it's just jelly inside. It's like. It's just I. I've no, like hardness anymore. Like you know, right. the, my head's just fucked. It's a bowl of stew in your head. Yeah. You just need to get you a helmet to wear. Like like Peter Check. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Just wearing a fucking scrum cap. The whole just time. need those bubble soccer balls around me at all times. Like yeah, yeah. And so, you're getting on well then here with the gym. We've been inside obviously um in the last hour to two hours um messing around mostly by me and then some a lot of productive training you guys train a lot more efficiently than we do oh, really yeah you got through your session yeah a lot quicker than the session today would. you have to understand was one person being really hung over and the other person not really wanting to train <laughs> okay so uh, that's we nope. tend to be fairly efficient yeah like, yeah it, a long weightlifting session might be like two and a half hours. You're getting a lot done, like. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. How long would you normally take, like, when you're training? Like, like you were saying there earlier on, that two and a half hours isn't unheard of. That would be reasonably standard sometimes okay. for me. Like, um, like, you know, like Chad Wesley Smith described it. Like, you know, it's it's gonna take longer for him to train just because of the the number of warm-up sets he has yeah, yeah. now i'm obviously not at that kind of level but like it's completely different to say when i was squatting like 180 now i'm squatting like 260 odd so you just you're taking longer to warm up and then your rest between sets is probably longer and what i find generally as well is that the closer i get to comp the longer sessions generally take because i allow myself the longer rest yeah, periods yeah. and stuff um but uh, no, somewhere two, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, now say last two weeks or so, it can yeah. obviously taper oh, down. Yeah. But um, say a month out or so, that's kind of when I'm in the thick of it. Um, so like yeah, I'd say two hours is probably standard enough for a lot yeah. of people. Would that be like from the day, like the moment you walk into the gym, like? Or? No, no, no. I mean, you can definitely get through in like an hour. I think when you start off. Oh, okay. Um, that's for us, like. Nearly all oh, the Sorry, you mean you mean including warm ups? Yeah, right? everything like that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's in the door, out the door, two hours okay. kind, of, oh. kind of job, like you know, um, for most people, um, and then a little bit longer. A lot of it as well as like with me training in city gym where it's a, a powerlifting club, the social aspect tends to drag sessions out a lot as well. Oh. You tend to chat and yeah, stuff yeah, and yeah. All that kind of thing, and you know, just just wasting that extra little bit of time, like setting up cameras for for recording sets and asking people for spots and you know they might be doing a set so you're waiting a couple of minutes for them oh, to yeah, come over and give you like, spots yeah, and yeah. things like that 
um, that can all kind of drag the process out. Um, That's definitely bit. the biggest problem for me training here. Like, Joe, in, if I'm in UL or if we're in Mallow, it's like really easy. Just go in. You don't really talk. Might like chat about your sets, but like just sit there in your box in between. Whereas in here, it's like someone wants to buy a protein bar or someone wants to chat. Yeah. Or, Joe, you're always... Even when you're not working, you're always working. You're always hustling, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's um, the thing. So that's tra- training here. Like, prob- I probably only train here once or twice a week. Like, oh, okay. Um, okay. Train at home a good bit then as well. Um, but definitely, it is hard. Like, cause most of the weightlifting we do up the front of the gym as well, so everybody yeah. walks fast. Um, and I remember I was talking to you about this, uh, I think it was about a year ago or so. Like, you were doing crazy shit between, like, going here and to UL to go to college and then back down here again in the evening and stuff yeah, to train yeah, or yeah, do yeah. coaching like are you here full time now is that madness kind of eased a little bit or are you still doing no crazy shit um, like that? I'm actually like in the process of selling here to Teddy so I'm only coaching here like three times a week now two or three times a week so the madness wasn't as bad this year but like second year and third year were mental so I'd be I'd usually clean the gym for maybe two or three hours on Sunday evening. I'd even train beforehand. And then I'd drive to Limerick at, say, 11 o'clock. I'd have lectures on Monday. I'd drive back from Limerick Tuesday kind of afternoon. Coach Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning. Back up to Limerick Wednesday evening. And then usually come back down to Cork then Thursday night. And then coach Friday, Saturday. It is mad, like for the whole semester. For all of it, yeah. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, it's retarded, like yeah. Joe, you know, and and if I put more work into like college and not into the gym, I'd probably have a much better QCA, like. But fuck it. Does a bigger, <laughs> does a better QCA really matter with sports science? I, don't know. I think a shit matter. degree is a shit degree, <laughs> whether it's <laughs> yeah, two two or so. two one, like. Yeah. <laughs> Tend to agree with you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so yeah, so. But overall, the gym is going well right now. Yeah, you're yeah, happy it is. Where yeah. It's at. There's a great That's group good. of people. Like, the gym, for it here, like, it's the group of people you have in here is what makes the difference, you know? Okay. And we're just really lucky with the people we have who train here. Like, they're all sound so, people. Yeah. And they're no all assholes. people who, yeah, they're all people who have no issue dropping something and giving you a hand with something. Mm-hmm. Or, like, if, if we have something on, people are really good to come to us and do stuff like that and support us. Like, uh not something like you've no control over you can control how good the coaching is or how good the programming is or or like the facilities you've no control over what the people who walk in the door to are like so we were just very lucky um and i think we're lucky now where we're established at the stage where if people come in with a bit of an ego the group that's here won't really allow that too much yeah like, they'll put a moral pressure on them yeah, to either yeah. cop on or leave yeah essentially yeah um because i've worked in other gyms where like you can't i'm making shit of this thing um where, where you can see like that ego like and especially in ul like it's just all ego lifting yeah joe there's nothing yeah, yeah. and then you see lads who are like training down back like the power lifters and stuff who are actually putting in work and they're just getting shat on, like, or people walking in front of the platform when you're doing snatches. I've seen walking under a bar is a common one as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like when it's overhead. Yeah. yeah. Um, or even, like, people sitting on box, like, facing somebody who's about to do a deadlift. Mm. Like, Joe, you know, or, or fucking doing pull-ups when somebody's just about to go for a squat on the cage, like. Yeah. Um, it makes it... Commercial gym banter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drives me fucking mental. I, I couldn't tell you how many times I've nearly hit someone with a barbell. Yeah. Um, just walking straight across the front of you, like. That was yeah. always way down, you know, like. Yeah. It's never really different, like. The, it's worse now, It's like? worse now. It's right? probably worse now, I would say, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so, I guess, moving on from there, I, I'd like to talk to you guys about your... your your more recent business venture, this uh, coaching business, the Silk of Strength. So tell me a little bit about that. Because, um, like, obviously I offer uh, powerlifting coaching online, but I would never really heard too much of people offering online weightlifting yeah. um, programming. Is it something that's commonly done or um, less so? Not uh, like, in terms of powerlifting programs, like there's an ocean of those, pro- like even free powerlifting programs out there, I suppose. Um, there's a few, like, generic weightlifting programs, not many, like, most of them be pretty shit. 
and like a lot of online marketing would be from probably Americans who may or may not be of good quality. Mm. You don't have to be PC yeah, as well. You can like, if they're shit, they're shit. Like the issue is <laughs> almost all, like because we've we've seen nearly all the online programs there are. Yeah. And the, they're not great. They're not great. The and kind then, like the other day, the Americans then is more like like Eastern Bloc lifters who are doing programming, which may or not be applicable to the people they're coaching. You know, really yes. like. Yes. Whereas their name would carry them through, like, you know, and, like, I've never seen any of their programs. Well, I've seen some of them, and they're just pretty, like, bit bare bones, just what it, like, okay. just what they used, like, when they were training. Yeah, kind of thing, like. and in the case of the former one, where it's, like, say, the, the American ones, for example, that end up on the internet or whatever, yeah. are, like, are they bad because of the person who wrote them and they don't know what they're doing, or is there another reason behind it? Is it because they... Don't want to. They don't want to be giving you their uh, their best programming for free or yeah. is anything like that. Or? I think like weightlifting programs, people tend to think there's a huge science behind it, but at the end of the day, you need to get people technically better at moving the bar, and you need to make them stronger at the same time. Mm. Yeah. And like, there's a huge range of programs that will make people bullshit strong. And then there's programs that just completely neglect that side of it and they just do the lifts. Whereas, like, you need a happy medium. And, like, of the ones, like, we won't go name, but, like, most weightlifting programs at the moment don't join those two things together very well. Right. Like, yeah. they almost, they're almost proud of, like, it being so technical mm -hmm. or there being so many derivatives of the lift in it where, and then you're making fuck all gains and strength. Yeah. I think like cause as well when the American program they would be definitely the biggest people selling programs online like numerous different companies I suppose and people like America doesn't really have a history of like weightlifting like and we didn't either here but we just got really lucky with the people we interacted with at the start you know just mm -hmm. if we ended up anywhere else like yeah. lifting in the country we might not have ended up like the way we are now like you know and I got lucky enough over the last few years like to interact with like you know like some former Olympic champions and stuff like that and basically see that like all the programming is kind of the same the same things are done back in the day like you know yeah. all the programs are basically like they're more similar than they are different yeah, 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 yeah. more similar like yeah. like any differences would be like cultural differences like in the way the training like you know would be approached maybe like okay. but bar that like it's snatching and cleaning jerking yeah. and squatting and in like reasonable intensities like and then you go up and then you go back down again yeah it's not much difference like and when it comes to weightlifting programming, how much, how much do you guys think actually just getting physically stronger with uh, basic movements like the squat, deadlift, uh, pressing, pulling movements, um, pull variations, or like those kind of strength-focused um, movements, how important are they to your, the progress of your actual weightlifting total? I think uh, pulling probably isn't massively important. Yeah. Sometimes some pulls is like important for a very specific lifter. Um, like I, when I jerked 200 kilos there a few weeks ago the first time, like the only reason, like I hadn't done any like uh, jerks from the rack in a very long time before that, but I just did lots of strict press benching, uh, like weighted pull-ups and weighted dips, like, and this is probably the main reason I made that lift, like. Yeah. But like. Is that, a, is that a PB for you? Yeah, that was like yeah. a 10 kilo PB, like. Whereas, like, from, like, wouldn't do a lot of pulls or anything like that no. much, like... I think people in in weightlifting, people love, like, you'll see people going to, like, 120% of their snatch and doing, like, four, six sets of four, like, straight away after they do their snatches, like, and they end up doing a snatch pull that looks fucking nothing like their snatch, whereas for us, our... Our pulls are always very, very similar to the weight you're actually be snatching. Mm. Um, Most of them would be way less. Like yeah, yeah. Like a pull should be something that you're building, just a movement pattern with. It's not like build strength with squatting and pressing and stuff like that. Not really with pulling. Okay. Because like that pull from the floor and weightlifting is so different to the pull from the floor for a deadlift. Like we've heard stories of like people like with a genuine max of like a two hundred kilo deadlift like would be walls out and they'd be cleaning like one eighty like yeah. like Asian lifters and like a. Or like, there's an American lifter there who 
definitely couldn't tell us more than like 19 you're cleaning like 180 and stuff like that mm. yeah, yeah yeah so that, that's actually one that interests me because yeah. like the example I would give on that is like someone like a Cahill Bird yeah. and I know it's only a kind of an N equals one but yeah. I would have always felt Cahill was a lot stronger than maybe his like, like his clean and jerk would have yeah. reflected for yeah, example yeah for sure like, does that that make sense? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Like, that's just technically in the fish he is, was, you know, like he's. Because he's an amazing yeah. squatter. Yeah, you that's know? the thing, like, yeah. Um, and is that just because of his particular. He gravitates more towards the strength side, or was it that he maybe should have put more focus onto technique? Um, Let like the shit you, talk again. <laughs> like, well, if we're to use someone yeah. like a Cahalbert who yeah, has that yeah. kind of ratio of yeah. a massive back squat yeah. and like there's a big discrepancy between their back squat and yeah. their clean and jerk, for example. I think sometimes you have people who are just really good at squatting and it's really easy for them. So like their clean and jerk might not be that inefficient. That might be a great clean and jerk for them. Like, but just because they have like a massive back squat, you think oh, but sure they should be doing more. Like, so. but it might not be the case. Like that one, like. If they're doing like 150 with a 250 back squat, it might be that they're just really good at squatting and that clean and jerk for them is just balls out effort, like, you know. And in another case, it might be just really poor technical ability, okay. like, yeah. Yeah, right, okay, very good. That's, I think, that, like, that's a big challenge with the, the kind of whole online program game is that you have people coming to you with, you can have people huge discrepancies, like, mm. and just trying to tailor for those people and, and get programs that are going to, to suit them as hard, especially when you're not seeing, like we've like, we have a guy in Australia, we've got like a guy from Dubai onto us, like mm. there's people from all over the place that we're never ever gonna meet and we might see videos of them, but it's, that's like where the real, yeah. that's why it takes hours for us to write programs is because you literally have to tailor for absolutely everything in it. Most people probably right. end up doing less squatting than they were probably, yeah. like way less, and they'll end up with a better squat after it, like with way less work like at probably a third of the volume they're doing in intensity yeah and then improving their lifts their technical ability like okay and their squad will be better like. and i go so far as to say they do they'll do more accessory work mm -hmm. like more kind of like classical bodybuilding or classical core right. work Hard than they've ever imagined weightlifters do like okay um and what's the rationale behind that just most people aren't fucking strong enough or posturally strong enough for a lot of lifts like i wouldn't think like I was neglected a lot of the last few months, even like yeah. You know, but that's after having one fifty snatch, like you know. And especially when you get people and you see, it's a technical breakdown or it looks like a technical fault in the lift, like if their hips are shooting up or something like that. A lot of the time, it's they're just not fucking strong enough mm. to do it. And you can you can cue them till the cows come home, but cues aren't gonna fix something long term. Whereas it might just be a blatant lack of core strength or a blatant lack of leg strength is forcing this fall to come up over and over again okay whereas like you're getting them stronger and fixing falls at the same time by just some kind of intelligent accessory work weightlifters love this notion of like oh i just do the lifts or like just snatch and clean and jerk and squat every day yeah and that's it mm -hmm. that's like that really was like the cool thing to do but long term it's definitely not a it's definitely not the way forward at all. very good and so when it comes to the the services that you um provide with the with the online coaching i presume to get around those kind of things where you're trying to improve someone's technique i presume like a large part of it is watching a lot of videos and stuff and then yeah, just yeah. trying to like is is it difficult trying to spot the 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 finer aspects of technique that need to be worked on Not really. um or Not does that easy. just come with experience that you can spot things easily it's yeah. pretty obvious like most of them you know a lot of people are beginners like you know like when okay. Clarence misses a like a snatch, I don't know what he misses for like. Yeah, when yeah. When someone misses an eighty kilo snatch, like it's very easy to see like. Right. It's more wrong the thing is, like, everybody you know. makes the same mistakes. Yeah. You know? That's so the thing, yeah. You you nearly see in the thumbnail of the video a lot of the time where like fuck it, his hips are way too high or like there's something wrong here and then it's just usually simple fixes, change the most things like. Okay. Um, and we've got like the guys we have on board at the moment are very good for sending us stuff, um. And just the group of people we have tend to be very analytical. Uh, so like a lot of time you're getting a video and someone's like, oh, how does this snatch look? And then they'll send you five points on how they thought it looked themselves. So like they're, yeah. 
even that thing of like self-reflection and, and them having to send us the video you can see that they're thinking about it a lot more than, than yeah, themselves. Yeah, because self-conscious when they're sending it to someone, you know, because they're like, they know they're going to get like, uh, I suppose... A bollocking? Yeah. Take, <laughs> yeah. Take the heart, like, you know, so like... Constructive it's, criticism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're immediately on defensive, like, but it's good for them than that. Yeah. Yeah. Like. yeah. And have you found any challenges with it compared to just coaching someone online? Or uh, um, in person, rather? There, Like, there are challenges. Mm-hmm. Like, I really like getting a lot of feedback from the people. So like the weightlifters we have here, we're seeing them multiple times a week and mm. then if I'm not seeing them, I'm sending them texts or sending them messages and you know exactly how they're reacting to volume. So like, even though most of the guys are, are getting onto us once a week or, or even a bit more, it's still very tough. If someone's in a different country and you don't know them, it's tough to be like, how's the body feeling? Yeah. And they're like, ah, it's grand. Yeah. But yeah, you've no yeah, idea. Yeah. Like You can't even, like when you see someone in here, you yeah. can tell from their body language. You can yeah, because like, yeah. you get people in here saying they're grand, and you know they're not yeah. fucking grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, like almost posthumously, the lifts like it's nearly too late because it it was done a week ago, and mm. you're trying to get them to remember what they were feeling like, so they didn't yeah. give them a cue, and you hope they remember the next time they do that thing, which might be another week's time again. So like, you're all correcting things after, and you're hoping they remember it. Like you might end up telling them the same thing for like six weeks in a row, and then eventually they'll be like. The time, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah so that's yeah, probably yeah. the biggest thing. like just really slow, like yeah, saturation of the information. The that's way. we were, like when we're giving them the programs, we're trying to just pass on our philosophies to them as well. Like so, yeah. okay, like the thing of not missing lifts. Like you saw me miss a snatch earlier, but like don't fucking miss lifts in training, mm-hmm. Joe. You know? mm-hmm. And we're just like constantly trying to feed them with like the same principles that we'd apply to ourselves, of like just simple things and it. It, it does make a difference just to get them on board so everybody's working towards the same thing like pretty good okay so um that is for anyone who's interested in online weightlifting coaching that is silka strength you can find them on instagram Sika. Sika. Sika strength yeah we do Sorry. powerlifting as well i'm i'm dyslexic that's okay <laughs> I'm not actually dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, seek a strength yeah. on Instagram. Anyone yeah. else that can find you? The website will be up in like two or three weeks. Yeah, soon. Very soon. Good. And we do strength training for CrossFit as well, which is really good. We like those programs. People doing them like They're so. fucking tough programs. Yeah, they're very good. Which is actually the next thing I want to get onto is yep. um, CrossFit. So, so... Like with me, I'm always looking at weightlifting from the outset, being a powerlifter. I'm not directly in the thick of it like the way you guys are. But from the outset, it would seem like over the last few years, CrossFit has benefited weightlifting hugely. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, fucking hell, yeah. Definitely Maybe Western tell me yeah. a little bit about that and how that's actually, um, how it's actually benefited weightlifting. Like, people just didn't, don't know what weightlifting is. Yeah. Like, okay. even to this day, like, um, just a lot more exposure. Like, you've got probably 15 or 20 CrossFit gyms in Cork like and they're everybody in that CrossFit gym knows like what ollie lifting is yeah. like, or what a snatch is or what a power clean is it's just people don't get exposure to it like and then even people going to normal gyms might not get exposure to it yeah um, the sheer volume of gyms with, like bar and bumper plates is yeah is, even that alone is massive like yeah yeah because I'd say when I started weightlifting in 2011 like Limerick like UL and Mallow, which are both like say half an hour, an hour and a half respectively, were the only two gyms within that distance, like that had a bar and bumper plates, like yeah, it was unheard of, like no, like and now it's like if you go down to Bantry, yeah, there's some fucking PT studio with bars and bumpers, yeah, like, um, but yeah, it's definitely just exposure, like yeah, conceivably, organizations like Weightlifting Ireland should be cleaning up now, like you should have huge membership. Because you have, like, you're talking about in the space of 10 years getting, like, 300%, no, even more, like, huge increases in the amount of people who know what weightlifting is. Yeah. Like, it is, it's a chance of opportunity for for people who are coaching weightlifting and for people involved in weightlifting to actually get a grasp and get good people involved. Yeah, definitely. Um, Some of them, like, CrossFit athletes as well, like, We'll probably work the hardest at the programs as well. Like, yeah, they'll yeah. just shut up and do most of them. Like, from people doing our programs, like, they'll just send a video and it's done. Like, you know, and there's no, like, there's no, like, kind of oh, well, huge analysis. This, this is like, how's that look? Uh, yeah, just <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You know, they're almost sending a video 
somebody have sent a video of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They don't really give a shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, get it done, like. Yeah. It'll have to be said flat, like, just fucking doing it, like. Yeah. And has it, um, has it detracted from weightlifting in any way, do you think? No, I wouldn't think there okay. were any negatives at all. No. Far away the positives, like. Right, right, right. Yeah. I can't think of any real negative across it. Like, no. Like, if you go to any competition, any competition now, probably two thirds of the people there, if not more, have come in through, they were in a CrossFit gym or they started doing CrossFit somewhere or they saw what CrossFit was and they came across mm-hmm. from weightlifting. Okay. So it's more common to go from CrossFit to weightlifting than the other way around, is it? Oh, yeah, oh God, I'd yeah, say yeah. like 100 to 1 kind of like... Oh, right, okay. Yeah, Virtually, more, I'd say of, more of the people starting weightlifting now, you could safely say over 80% of those have come from CrossFit. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Like, there's probably more people now who don't do weightlifting, but like watching weightlifting, like from, say, on YouTube and stuff, like people like, like watching Clarence. Like, yeah. Yeah. Then, like a couple of years ago like, they're like they genuinely have nothing to do with lifting they never want to do lifting yeah. but they just like watch you know because they understand what it is like you know like it's not uncommon to walk in here and there to be like three 50 year old women sitting out there in the kitchen watching fucking illy ill and do clean and jerks Joe. that's amazing yeah, yeah yeah it is it's like it really does or really has opened people's eyes to what the sport is because mm. uh, it's still a, a very 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 niche sport um and do you think in terms of Ireland's competitiveness, it will, it will maybe not now, but maybe in years to come, it will benefit mm. as a result of that? Probably not. I don't think Just because it's getting more exposure everywhere, it, the, ban- the, the differences are going to balance out? Yeah. yeah. Ireland. Uh, Ireland's competitiveness won't come never. on no, ever, never. I don't think. Uh, like, it, <laughs> there's, like, there's multiple things that are, are working against it, but... Yeah. Like... A country with a relatively small or a very small population right. who have hugely successful sports teams and sports where professional athletes make good money mm. um, and there's plenty of opportunity for genetically gifted people to go and play sport and make a living out of it. I don't think weightlifting is ever going to take off here. Like yeah, it's kind of one or two options. It's either like privatization of weightlifting, like which won't happen in Ireland, or like state-sponsored weightlifting, which yeah. won't happen in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. So... It's six of one, like you're kind of yeah, away, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like in America, like you, just a sheer volume of people involved in lifting. Yeah. Eventually, some company will come along and support them better. And yeah, like what Muscle Driver did or what Marsh yeah. is doing there, like, um, and like they do get a stipend in America now and stuff, like, but yeah, or if you're in like any other, like a lot of other countries, like weightlifting is a national sport kind of thing as such. Mm. But neither of those will ever happen in Ireland. Imagine, no. like, there's never going to be a high performance team, like. Maybe no. even seeking strength is like massive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's their weightlifting breeding freaks. Made it. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, though, like, probably will never happen recently. Yeah. But it didn't have to get to a stage where there's like a thousand members and there's a competition on every month. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Mm. And then you never know. Like, you might get another Clarence coming along, or like another like someone like Sarah coming along. Like, you know, he might get someone then, but I don't think there'll ever be like a team of eight lifters going to worlds who are. We're competitive, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've actually been to a few international competitions, yeah. haven't you? Actually, yeah, um, competed to European Juniors in 2013, I think, uh, European Seniors in 2015, and then just like smaller things like Celtic Nations and stuff like that. Um, that was about three years ago now. Kind of stepped back from competing then at the moment because, mm. uh, like, in terms of like competing and everything, like, without much support, like, I kind of all or nothing and such in some ways, so like. If I'm not gonna be top five, I don't really want to be doing it. Like, cause yeah. it's off my own back most of it. Like, That's so fair. it's kind of like it's coming out of your own pocket. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I love training, like, but weightlifting Ireland is going through big changes at the moment. Yeah. Um, I think it'll come outside better than it was. Yeah, it was in a huge heap, huge heap of shit. Yeah, the last for two the years. last two years. Like when I when I did the Europeans in 2015, like we were really on the up and up. Like everything was going great. Like say, like when I started weightlifting, there was probably Genuinely, uh, I'd say two two women weightlifters, and now there's probably it's probably half and half. Yeah. Membership peaked, I think, like at five hundred maybe two years ago, and it's down again in the last two years. It's down to fuck off. But I think it's 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 like it's going back to the way again now. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a good. There seems to be a good group of people involved now. International weightlifting is in a kind of a shit state as well at the moment. Yeah, it yeah. seems to be that way, alright. Yeah. Um, like, a lot of positive retests hasn't done much for the sport. Like. No. <laughs> A lot of positive retests, like every every positive retest has just detracted from the sport. I think the top ten 
94s in 2012. Nine is half-tenny retested or tested positive. Like the, uh, the, like the IOC, so the weight, class, weight classes have to change and the IOC, the Olympic Committee, were like, you need to get rid of the 94 kilo class because there's obviously something going on there with that particular thing. Like, yeah, which yeah. is irrelevant. It just happened to be that they all get tested, but they were literally like, you have to get rid of those weight classes. Like, and like not put in like a 95 or a 93 in a no, space like just just like they literally just yeah, go back on that's yeah. okay. like that is just a, such a like i don't even know if they gave the medal to the 10th place they must have like but yeah you get in the post like you literally get the medal Jeez. in the post. but then like the only reason that person in 11th place is getting the medal is because they're, they're yeah because their sample wasn't they weren't tested, tested. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and you can be very confident of that joe that yeah that, that's going on there too like weightlifting just got like just the nature of the sport means that they need to take more drugs close to the competition than other sports would need, like, you know. Yeah. Like, you know, Victor Conte, yeah. they were the Balco fella, he was saying that, like, the sprinters were better a few weeks after they'd taken the drugs, you know. Whereas weightlifting is, like, you'd imagine if you can take a year in the day, like, that you're going to be better than you take a year two weeks ago, like, you know. So, yeah. like, it's just, a, it's just... It's just, just the nature of the beast as yeah. well. Yeah, It's like cycling and, like, it's like CrossFit, like, it's... The sport is so set up for something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, cycling is yeah. so Culture. power dominant. Yeah, and yeah. it's just, it's not like rugby or something where doping could still be an issue, but that's not, like, sh strength and power isn't what the sport is built on, like. Whereas with weightlifting or cycling or CrossFit, like, it's it's just kind of a big target to put up there because it's, it's a really easy thing for people to see like yeah it's very easy for people to imagine like being stronger be better yeah yeah Ilya being on gear than like say like Lance Armstrong like you know, a lot of people were like no he was on gear like you know yeah it's just hard for people to imagine like it was very easy for people to imagine weightlifting was on gear like you know all the weightlifters were like yeah I get you radio so I guess we'll wrap up there now um so just before we finish up uh guys if you could just plug anywhere that uh people who want to get in touch with you can do so like instagram uh emails anything like that or where can people find you if they want to get in touch with you either about coaching or maybe just want to maybe they just enjoyed this just episode wanna just, just want to hang out yeah you're cool dudes uh so for sika the best thing to do is just dm the sika strength instagram page um or else uh sika strength at gmail.com very good and then i'm fit dara on instagram I'm uh, Gurfling on Instagram. Great stuff. And the other thing is, if you're in West Cork and you want to come train in a good gym, call into Teddy in Band and Strength and Conditioning and give him a shout. Great stuff. And we'll just finish on this very last thing. I wasn't going to include it, but I uh, decided I will. So um, can you guys give me your most awkward moment ever? Other than this podcast, no, right? Can't. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can't. Um, oh. Maybe your second awkward, so if it's too, if it's too bad. Um, I can't think of anything right now. Uh, I can't think of anything I've found. That this silence right now, maybe. My father <laughs> knocked in my sister's dog last week. Oh, Jesus, Darren. That was That's pretty awkward. About as fucking awkward as it gets. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, I can't be worse than that. <laughs> it just look, look. I can't do anything We've, like. No, I can't do anything right now. Um, We've had some interesting altercations at weightlifting competition. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even close to most awkward moments, so like. No. Uh, weightlifting is just much weirdos, like, so. Really? Yeah. Weightlifting, if you were to put. Being average. Like a normal person in weightlifting is highly autistic in, in real life. It's, it, it's not. We take the piss out of it, like, but everybody I know in weightlifting, bar probably two people, is either fucking mental yeah. or else deeply OCD. Yeah, like just egotaining. Ego yeah, it's just. Like, you just see like warm up rooms and people are just like this. Joe, it's. It takes it the people from other sports, you know, people who might be have been in athletics, like. They come over to weightlifting then, and they stay in weightlifting, like, you know? Yeah. Because it just fits the groove in their fucking mental brains, like. Yeah, literally, it's just all... Every, every weightlifting moment is awkward. It's all awkward. Yeah. 
Like the, the prize giving away with the competition. just perfectly. So. <laughs> <laughs> the prize giving is the most awkward thing ever because oh, nobody geez. likes clapping and nobody no. likes oh. getting the prizes. No. No. So it's just, no one wants to give the prizes either. No. Bastards. And yeah. they, like people don't like shaking hands with each other and like it's just nobody cries. No, no, no. <laughs> nobody touches each other. Yeah. So no emotion whatsoever. No emotion. So it's if like you got a kid there. who's like looks like they have a bit of talent and they have OCD, send them over. It'll probably be good. <laughs> yeah. It takes a certain kind of person to just sit on a bench for two and a half hours in between lifts and not talk to him. Or go out to their shed and train in their shed like at eleven yeah, o'clock yeah, at night. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is like. Just fanatically concentrate on two lifts and just make them look perfect. Like, yeah. You used to train in your shed for a while, didn't I you? I did. I did. Did it you was do it at eleven o'clock at night? Oftentimes, yeah, I did. <laughs> but it was never out of choice. Like it's just because I had to. Like I had no choice. Like it's either that or not train. Like yeah. I was saying, there was nowhere near like yeah. with like bars and bumper plates. So I spent I spent first fifty percent of the first four years of my weightlifting career was. Was in that shed, like. I still like, train in my shed. Lots of PBs, like. Yeah. Um. You no, know, it's a very simple sport. Like you need yeah. a barbell, you need bumpers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Maybe some cow mats. You don't even technically don't even need a rack, like. Just nah. the floor, like. Just, you can get away with it. Yeah. You can get away with it. Like you can buy a pair of those H stands. I think we got a pair off D H for like seventy quid or something. Yeah. In January, like, it's a very simple sport. Like the barriers for entry are very very low, like. Great stuff. You just need OCD. <laughs> All right, so that wraps up our podcast of weightlifting and OCD and alcohol-free beers. Thanks again to Heineken for those. And <laughs> so we'll wrap it up there, guys. Dara, Gerfling, thanks so much for this, for giving up your time and your knowledge and expertise. And uh, listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you do, make sure to subscribe uh, for notifications of future videos. And uh, as always, a shout out to our videographer, Loud Mike. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Oh.